This video is going to show you how to make sites that you regularly visit on the internet very easy to access from the desktop of your computer. Now all browsers have this function called bookmarks, which are like indexes. And I happen to have a lot of bookmarks here, more than you're even beginning to see. It runs right off my screen, I have so many. And that's okay for me, because I know pretty much where the ones are I use and I can scroll through them. But if there was one that I particularly wanted to make extremely easy to get to, like let's say for entrance, the St. George Senior Citizen Center, there is a very easy way to do that. So this is our Senior Citizen Center homepage. You can see information about our lab here, our Facebook page, our hours. I'll scroll over a little bit, you can see the main part, there's the location. and so on. So the way to make this easier than going through the bookmark area, and I'll repeat that task again, is I went to bookmarks, St. George Senior Citizen Center, and I'm actually going to right click and do sort by name, and that tidies them up a little bit. Notice now they're sorted by name, and I'll click on it again, and there is the St. George, Utah Senior Citizen Center homepage. So let's say I don't want to bother going through this whole bookmark thing. I use this page all the time, and this is just too much hassle. I want an easier way to do it. There is a much easier way to do it. So what you do is, and this doesn't matter what browser you're in, you can be using Chrome, Mozilla, Internet Explorer, or any of the other possible browsers, they all have what's known as an address bar. And an address bar is where you put in the location of what it is you're looking at. And some of you who've been around computers for a while remember the days when you had to put in http colon slash slash www dot and then hit return. And that has really become kind of an artifact. It was never officially really necessary. The people who coded the original browsers for the internet, and this goes back to Mosaic, in 1993 at the University of uh, Champaign, Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. It came out of their computer lab. So the, the first internet browser, browser based on the World Wide Web as designed by Tim Berners-Lee at the CERN laboratory in Switzerland. Uh, a lot of interesting information about the uh, internet is available out there. But anyhow, you don't really need to do a lot of that anymore. So what you'll find here is that I can just shorten it. We can get rid of the HTTP, we can get rid of the www, and we just have that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to highlight this by left-clicking here, scrolling over it, right-click, copy. I'm going to minimize this browser. I'm going to right-click on my desktop. I'm going to select New, Shortcut, Paste, now notice when I pasted it in, it actually went ahead and put back the HTTP colon colon. That's because the browser was actually hiding it from you so that you didn't need to get confused from it. But technically behind the scenes it was actually necessary if you're going to use it in something outside of a browser. So the browser was smart enough when I copied it to add it to the clipboard. So that's kind of cool. It's one of the reasons why I like Mozilla. Uh, I don't know if the other browsers do that or not. But generally speaking, as we're creating the shortcut, you do need that. But notice you don't need the www. So if you've highlighted a URL and you've gone to create a new shortcut, and all it's put in is this part of it, and it hasn't put in the HTTP colon slash slash, then you need to add that manually. But typically, I think you'll find most browsers, when you copy that address, go ahead and put the HTTP on your clipboard for you. Anyhow, you click Next to continue, and you give it a name. And I'm just going to give it the abbreviation I use, S-G-S-C-C. -C. And then I'll click Finish. And there it is, right in the middle of the screen. I can move it anywhere I want. Um, and of course, you can always auto-arrange your icons by doing 
sort by, and then this. All I did was right click on a blank area of my desktop, click sort by, and you can sort them by name or whatever, and they'll all go over to the left. So if I do sort by name, it disappears. I'll change where I'm capturing my screen, and you'll see that it's been moved up here to the top left hand corner. I'm going to change where I'm capturing my screen back to where I was. I'm going to drag this back to where it was. Now you may find that you have auto arrange on your icons and you can't drag them anywhere because they keep snapping back to the left hand side of the screen. We can help you fix that. Now I double click on this and it takes me directly to the web page. So you can do this for your interbased, internet based email such as Gmail or Yahoo. Any other site to use, LDS.com, um, anything. So if you have three, four, five, six sites that you always use and you don't want to go through the burden of filtering through all of your bookmarks to find them, this is your way around that. Now there is one caveat. Your desktop runs in computer memory. And what that means is, let me bring this little utility I have over. You can see that I have 34% of my RAM, which is random access memory, what's used to run programs and things on your computer as opposed to your hard disk, which is where the information is permanently stored. And so those of you who have your desktop completely covered with icons, you are using a lot of your RAM to do that, and it's not available to run programs and do other more useful things. So it's really not recommended that you completely cover your desktop with icons. There are other ways around doing that. And if you come into the St. George Senior Citizens Senior Center lab, we'll show you how to do that. But if you want to put four or five of these on your desktop, and then the number that I have kind of over here to the left, and I'll scroll down a little bit, that's not too bad. But anything more than what I've got here borders on starting to use too much memory. But you have to balance these things out. And if this is a web page I use all the time, putting three or four of these up here isn't too bad. But again, covering your entire desktop with icons is a no-no, and you really need to get away from that behavior. So again, the hours of the computer lab are 9 to 11.30, Tuesday through Friday, with the exception of most major holidays. And you're free to bring in your laptop computer or your desktop computer. If you bring in your desktop, only bring the tower. We have mice, keyboards, and monitors, so you don't need to drag all that along with you. A couple of caveats. We don't remove viruses, and we don't install operating systems. So thanks for watching the video, and we hope to see you in the computer lab real soon.